Chad, start with the pass game and talk to Neil about this. Uh, you guys struggled. He said it was one of the worst ones you guys have had. So why as you watch that? Yeah, struggled of uh, first time we struggled of recent weeks in the past game with some, at least lately, of the uh, unprecedented drops. And, you know, uh, I appreciate Tony Gary. He wasn't his best as well. To improve their receivers, I mean, just overall individual improvement. How do you get better? Just concentration and focus. You know, we didn't we didn't see it. They've been doing a phenomenal job, being consistent catching the football. Obviously, Garrett's played really well the last couple of weeks, and you know, didn't really didn't see the, uh, you know, that performance you know coming. So they just got we got to reset, hit the reset button, and and you know, refocus and get back on track. Run it quite as much in the last couple of games. It, Defense is trying to take him away by design from you guys. Is there a reason? Yeah, a little bit of both. You know, uh, trying to take, trying to limit his uh, his ability to be able to escape the pocket and you know create uh, extend plays with his legs. So you know, team's doing a great job of trying to take that away with the uh, mixing coverages and also like different variety of blitzes they see him. Surprised you most about uh, last Saturday's performance. I would say uh, the fact that for the first for the first time here in a couple of weeks, I, I didn't think we were we were smart enough, good enough, or played physical enough. Offensive line wise, I mean, for most of the year, yeah. Dame line of scrimmage, yeah. and that was kind of a surprise, wasn't it? That was a big surprise, and that's yeah. where you know talking about the uh, you know being you know good enough and physical enough. I didn't think we were physical enough, and. And that was a big surprise. We hadn't, you know, we hadn't played thus far through the season. We've always, you know, that's one of our strength. That is our strength, you know, our physicality. And, and I didn't think that was there you know, Saturday. So how do you flip that switch for Cincinnati? And what is like so just a uh, you know, hit the reset button and uh, refocus? Those guys, uh, you know, those guys came in yesterday. We had a, uh, you know, we we had practice yesterday. Those guys were real sharp, real focused. Uh, guys held themselves accountable. We held ourselves accountable as coaches as well. And you know, guys owned up to it, and they understand it. Came in and wa watched the film, and you know, took you know, took accountability to the uh, the way they played the game, and you know, some of the fundamental you know lapses we had and areas we had. So hit the reset button and and get back going tomorrow. This is kind of a general deal, and I asked Jordan about it too. But it seems like it's easier following a disappointing performance to coach your team and get them prepared than it is when you've had some success like you had prior to the Oklahoma game. Why is that? Just a, just a, it's all, it's all a mental game, a psychology deal. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, guys, you know, they get, they kind of go both ways. You know, when you have success, you know, you want to make sure the guys remain humble and hungry and, you know, and continue on to focus on the task at hand and, and not lose sight of, the fact that, you know, the teams that we're going out against, whether we're underdogs or the favorites, that we got to go out there and play ball because anybody could be beaten. And obviously when you lose games, you know, guys get a lot more upset and, you know, the concentration, you know, it, it heightens a lot more, but the focus heightens a lot more because you want to get back on track. So it's more of a mental mental component. You've been talking about the guys about being consistent with all our action, whether we win or lose a football game. So, like I said, we just got to hit the reset button and refocus and get back going. You know, probably when you got into this deal, and you started coaching, you probably knew by Thursday, yeah, we either got it or we don't. Yeah. But today, uh, it could be right at the game time. You're not sure, okay, are we are we mentally there? Are we there? Why has that changed so much? I don't know. That's I know that varies. That, that's a great that's a great question. I can't answer it because you it, it's times where it could be late in the week. The guys are up, and you feel like, man, we're gonna go out. We're gonna play really well, and and, and you don't. It could be times where you know guys just seem down, lethargic, and you know. You know, just kind of, you know, just the energy level's not there. Then they go out and they play at an, you know, an elite level. So, it, I don't know the answer for it. We just got to do great. Yeah. Work, you usually yeah. know. Right. Or have a good feel. This is how it's going to. But sometimes that isn't that way. Yeah, anymore. sometimes it's not that way. Uh, but I can say for us, last couple of weeks, uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday, our work day has been really good. Like I said, that performance uh, Saturday, you know, that was, I didn't see that coming at all. You know, that's credit to Oklahoma. They played really well. Had a great game plan and went out and executed and played at a level that we've been playing for the last couple of weeks, at least offensively. So we just got to reset and, and, and get back to playing our style of football. Yeah. CJ, 
CJ is still new, new with the running back. Yeah. Right? He's not the, the developed, experienced running back. Yeah. Five years behind or anything like that. Is there something in his style that is responsible for why he's been hurt uh, you know, a few times? Or could he, I mean, is, does he have to protect himself better or anything? Well, he got to – sometimes it just takes some – it just, you know, just – some of the accidents just happen. You just kind of get hit in the wrong spot. You know, when he got in, when he got injured the other day, it just – he just kind of got hit in the wrong spot. You know, it wasn't necessarily him. You know, his pad level wasn't high. It wasn't like him in a bad position. just got – just got hit the wrong way. Uh, but he's – you know, one thing he could do a better job of is understand how to attack half a man. He's a big kid, so – Obviously, sometimes, you know, people, you know, you think you're a big guy, you just run over everybody. So he could do a better job learning how to attack half a man and not run down the middle of the guys. But the the injury he had, the, he sustained the other day, it was just, it was just a freak incident just happened. Just kind of got rolled up. Wrong place, wrong time. You, you talked before, and it was kind of even added, evident against Oklahoma, that Jaheim is so close to breaking one. Yeah. And he's been playing well. Mm -hmm. What can you do, or is there anything you can do to try to force that on, or is it just going to happen eventually? It'll happen eventually. It, it, it'll happen. He, it'll happen. You know, like as a little thing that you can see that he's not doing that would allow him to break it, or well, no, not really. You know, he's been like I say, he's been the last two weeks. He's he's broken him. He had a explosive run the other day. I think a lot of times he gets so he gets so excited. He gets so anxious when he gets in space. Um, you know, he's already got in his mind with the move he's going to make against a guy sometimes and kind of just lose sight of where he is in, the, in between the tackle box and might trip over somebody. That's what happened the other day. He said, Coach, I, I saw that guy coming, and I was already prepared to make a move on him, and then all of a sudden I tripped over one of the linemen. So he gets so excited, gets so anxious to make somebody miss and go hit the big one. Sometimes just lose sight of where he is in between the tackle box. But he's sighting to watch. And he, he's special, and it, it, it'll, it'll pop for him. Jordan, about some of his young guys on defense who aren't necessarily playing a lot right mm -hmm. now, the redshirt guys. So your guys that you're planning on redshirting, uh, what do you see out of them? How they developed over the four months of practicing? Uh, DJ Oliver is going to be a really good football player. Going to surprise a lot of people. He's a big kid. So, you know, everybody knows that part of it. But when you when you watch the kid run and you see him break away and pull away from people, that's gonna surprise a lot of people. He's gonna be really good. Um, some of the younger linemen are gonna be really well, really good as well. Cooper Young, Nick Cray, those guys are gonna be really good. Johnny Williams, those guys are gonna all three of those guys are gonna be real special. Landon Livingston's coming along. Those guys get a lot of work in the uh, Monday night and Thursday night ball, and they really progressed and developed and. And then also having those guys in front of them, you know, seeing how those guys practice, seeing how those guys play and prepare has helped those guys come along as well. So, really excited about that young group of linemen. Graham and TJ Johnson, what do you see? Yeah, TJ Johnson's going to be a really good player, very athletic. Uh, and Graham's going to be a really good player. And those guys uh, had a really good day yesterday in Monday Night Football as well. So, it's a lot of really good young talent. And TJ uh, Johnson's a kid, man. That could, he has great versatility. He's playing the tight end spot right now, you know. Uh, has a versatility to go play out wide as well with his size and his athletic ability and his speed. It's, it's I think you're going back to CJ, I think I understand what attacking half the guy means, right? Just yeah. don't let him square up on you. But he's running in the line so often that can be difficult. Um, I don't know, do you, do you, does he try to get outside more? Like, I, I guess take me through that. It seems like yeah, really Well, I'll tell you what, he's done uh, the first the first half of the season, you know, he, he didn't play his best ball. But uh, this last half of the season, he's played he's played really well. He's done a great job with his – he's done a great job with his – Eye discipline. He's done a great job of, you know, getting pre-snap, you know, reads on where the free hitters are. Free hitters, I'm talking about the safeties that's responsible for tackling him. We can't block everybody, so he's all responsible for one of them. And so he's done a phenomenal job pre-snapping those guys and doing a great job, what we call manipulating linebackers to put himself in a position where he's running away from that that's that free hitter that's supposed to step down and tackle him. So, like, like I said, as of recently, he's, you know, he hadn't really – you know, just running directly down the middle of the guys. But it's something, you know, the first half he, he was doing that's kind of contributed to some of his soreness on, on this half of the season. But like initial contact, you want to make a move and try to get one shoulder instead of two shoulders? Yeah, absolutely. Or? Okay. Yeah. And then do a great job of using his off arm, you know, a lot more. Stiff arm or what we call near leg, near shoulder. So he can equalize the collision instead of taking all of it. Disappointing. Was that, is that Very disappointing. Again, that's just part of that, you know, I'm saying not being physical enough, you know, 
you know, not executing on the uh, the goal line, having all those opportunities to go get it in, couldn't get it in, and then also on the uh, in the short yard situation in the in the middle of the field during the game, and that's something that you know we've always been really good at short yards converting and making it happen, and so not getting that executed was very disappointing. I know you're just getting into Cincinnati, um, you're getting into them obviously more, but. What are the issues they present up front, and will they be similar challenges to what you faced last Leverage year? Leverage battles, uh, you know, really good. That's the best part of the defense. Really good interior, defensive line, and not as uh, not as big height-wise, but uh, stout. And, you know, it's going to be a leverage, a leverage battle, so we're going to do a great job. And it's one of the issues we had last week up front as well, is not playing with a great pad level, which didn't allow us to, you know, had the kind of strength that we needed at certain times, a point of attack to move people. So we're going to do a great job playing great pad level versus these guys. Anything else for Coach? Yeah, just um, the deep into the Traylon's true freshman season. Traylon like Ray? Yeah, it seems like he's um, – yeah, I got to narrow that down, don't I? Um, he seems like he's figuring some things out, getting comfortable, maybe getting caught up or ahead from, from where he was with his start. Um, mm-hmm. Relative to where a true freshman might be, uh, where does he stand right now? I think he's progressed really well. Uh, I think probably was caught up with him. He had a phenomenal fall camp. Then he started battling some injuries, which kind of slowed him at the uh, beginning of the season. And then now he's come on. He's showing the ball skills that he showed all of us in fall camp. You're able to see it. Uh, now he's taking a lot more reps than he probably anticipated taking. And he's going against some guys that some seasoned vets and some guys that are a lot older than him. So, you know, it's times where, like, he made uh, definitely one. He might have made two. Sp- had one spectacular catch for sure. That he was, I mean, literally just his toe was out of bounds. And so you look at that, you know, from a coach standpoint and even from him one-on-one, you know, that's where the strength comes into play. Uh, he's all, I mean, He's all season, maybe two all season away. Probably I say just all season away from man being spectacular. I mean, it just becomes a deal where, you know, he's just playing against older guys that's stronger than he is right now. But when he develops his strength with his ball skills and his body control, he he's gonna be real special. But light or low where he is right now, he's learned a lot. Gets lined up, he understands the plays. You know, just understanding how to get lined up and knowing the plays gives him a chance to. Have an idea of pre snap wise what's he what he's gonna what's he gonna do in this route and adjustment he may have to make versus a certain coverage and he's doing that as a true freshman which is really impressive. So once he develops the strength, he's gonna be really good. That helps me it helps immensely, you know, which is probably why he's so smart, you know, he's able to, you know, play all those sports and understand all the different, you know, assignments he has per sport. And also be able to go compete at a high level per the sport. You know, and also shows his body control and athleticism, and so it, and that background helps big time. And also the competitiveness. So he's here's a kid. You know, sometimes you know he doesn't get the best of those guys. You know, because of a strength deal, because he's so competitive and he's used to playing in competitive situations. Always has a next play mentality. Never a kid that gets real down, which is very is unique for a young guy that's used to making plays all the time and having success. Not to get down when he doesn't have the kind of success that he wants per play which allows him to go out there and keep the kind of mental intensity you need to have to be successful in a 60-minute ball game. So, kid has some impressive phys- physical gifts and impressive mentality as a freshman. Thank you all.